Ross followers. Today we are going to be playing with some resin. Um, of course, I'm using our two-part pour. So we do have two options. We have one from Envirotex and one from Color Pour. Now, it's just really going to come down to a preference. Unless you're doing something with food, um, this one does say that it is food safe. Um, but again, it just, it's going to come down to what you would want to do and what your project is. So I'm going to go ahead and pull these to the side. I want to talk about a few other things that you are going to need. So first off, I want to make sure you're working on a flat surface and that is covered. So I am just using a garbage bag here, but you can really use a silicone mat or anything else. Uh, if you are just getting started, I really suggest our color pour toolkit. So that will come with a nice clear um, plastic covering for your surface. It's also going to come with 10 of these little cups, um, which are basically like Dixie cups, but you can reuse these for multiple projects. And then it comes with stir sticks, tweezers, and of course, two pairs of gloves. So gloves are very important. You want to be protecting your hands because this can get very sticky. Um, if you are not wanting or looking at that kit, again, Dixie Cups are going to work great or these Popsicle Sticks work great as well to stir everything up. Um, another thing that you I would recommend you have is some type of measuring cup. So one thing about the two-part pours is it's very important that they are equal parts. And one thing I love about this cup from Envirotex is it has the measurements clearly labeled for you and you can get those equal parts. So one thing I do recommend is having three cups. So I tend to have one that has an R and an H and I measure out both my resin and hardener in two different cups and then I combine them into one. Um, again, keeping my popsicle sticks separate and not interchangeable. So when I'm done using these, I can just wipe it out with a paper towel um, and get it nice and clean and keep using it for future projects. Um, when you are done, I would like to point out you can clearly, you can easily save all your things as usually whatever my stir stick is. I kind of leave it below and I just flip my cup upside down let it drain there as all my projects are hardening and then I can just pull out the resin in the end. Um, another thing I find very important is make sure you are keeping your hair pulled up if you have any long hair. You don't want to get any resin and that you're in a well ventilated area. Resin does have a very strong smell, especially if you are using a heat gun, which I highly recommend. So this heat gun is gonna help pop any of those little pesky bubbles that you get in the resin along with, it's gonna help you kind of move your resin a little bit. So um, I have one from American Craft and I love using this when I'm trying to get those waves going. Speaking of waves, I do like to point out, we do have this fun little thing called Resi Blast. The bottle is a bit spendy, but you guys, the cells this creates is amazing. Um, if you've struggled in getting your waves, this is going to help you a bunch. Um, and all you need is a couple drops in one of these small little Dixie cups, and you can keep using this for multiple, multiple projects. Now, one thing about the resin I do like to point out on the Envirotex ones, if you are going to be using this for other projects and not all in the one day, is this one does have a white cap for your white font, which is your resin. And this has a black cap for your black font. This is awesome because you're not putting the wrong cap on your wrong container and sealing it shut. Um, once that resin and that hardener interact, it, it cures right away. Well, within 24 hours. All right, you guys, let's go ahead and pull our project in and go ahead and get started. Okay, you guys, so today I am gonna be using the Envirotex. I did go ahead and pre-mix it. I just want to again point out that I did do two and a half ounces of both the resin and the hardener, and then I mixed it all into this one cup, um, and I stirred it for about two and a half minutes 
So when you are stirring this, you do want to go slow and make sure you're scraping all the sides and the bottom. It'll kind of get really milky. Um, I would is the best way to describe it. And then it's going to go ahead and kind of clear up. Um, another thing is I have a tendency to mix really quick, but the slower you do mix, the less air bubbles you'll get. So I do have three colors I'm going to be playing with this time. So I have my marine blue, my roundy blue, and my white. And then we are using resi blast and that white to help with the waves. Um, these again are all acrylic inks. And I am going to want to make sure I'm saving some clear behind so I can mix up against my white here with Resi Blast. Okay, I think I'm gonna add a little bit more to this cups. All right, and then I did go ahead and pre-shake uh, these, but you wanna make sure you are shaking them really good because it does settle all the hue at the bottom of these. And then I'm going to be doing a full dauber worth into each of these cups here. And then I'll get these all mixed and then I will add the white or the resi blast to that white. I'm just gonna shake this real quick. So I'm just gonna go ahead and stir those up really quick. Um, you wanna make sure you get all the resin, all the sides, bottom. You wanna make sure you're mixing your color in very nicely, um, especially if you're using any pigment powders. If you're not mixing that, you might get some little chunks in there. All right, and then the white. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop some Resi Blast in there. So I'm gonna do about two drops for this. So two drops. And then I'm gonna make sure I really get that nicely mixed into that white color here. And now I'm going to go ahead and start with this blue first. And I'm kind of, I'm hoping to leave a little space up here. Um, and I'm going to kind of do mine at an angle. All right. And then I'm going to go ahead and come in with some clear. right along the edge of the blue there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and come in with that white. Again, this white has that Resi Blast. And I'm just using my popsicle stick so I can actually see how much I am pouring on here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and come in with that heat gun. So I'm gonna just kind of zhuzh the white into the blue. I don't wanna keep it in one spot for too long. Cause it can overheat my resin. And while I'm doing this, I'm also popping any bubbles which is really nice. So I can come in later and also finish popping all those. Just a little bit more. All right, we're gonna kinda let that set. And then I could go ahead and do another one of that dark, but I think I'm gonna come in with that marine blue. I'm kind of giving a little space here to that white. 
And then I'm gonna come in with some clear again. Looks like I might have actually used a little bit more or poured a little bit more resin than I'm gonna need for this. So I might go ahead and pull up my project just a little bit more. We will see as I finish this up here. So again, I'm gonna come in with that heat gun. And just, I'm kind of shaking it up and down. If I really want to, I can go straight and just kind of, whew. So I do suggest making sure you take some heat off because as you can see, it starts to look a little bit different and starts to interact and create that cell and lacing. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and come in with some more of this marine blue. And then I'm going to come in with a little bit of clear. I don't need too much here. Just a little. And then I'm gonna do that white. And then I'm gonna zhuzh it with that heat gun. And then I think my final touch, I'm just gonna put a little bit of that marine blue right in here at that end and I'm just gonna take that heat gun again since I have a little bit more white room up here and I have more resin I'm gonna go ahead and um, do one more layer so I'm gonna do that white along the edge here. And then I'm gonna come in with that clear. And then I'm gonna come in with that blue. Okay. So now I'm just going to take that heat gun to it. And just zhuzh it up. So I'm gonna kinda try to add a little resin here. Hopefully I can kinda get that white pushed up. And then I want this to have more blue, so I'm coming back in. All right, so now he gun one last time here. So I'm liking the way that's looking. I'm going to probably go ahead and let it be. I'm going to let it set. Um, again, resin is very fluid. So if this is not on a level surface, 
this might end up filling up with resin um, or if I pour over my cavity it's going to want to fill in up here before it pours over so you will want to keep that in mind when you are doing this pour um, I am going to probably come back in about 15 minutes and I'm going to hit it with a um, heat gun again just to kind of pop some of the bubbles since as the resin settles more bubbles are going to come up to the surface um, and then if I do have any leftover resin, even if it's just like a little bit, one, if you don't have a mold handy, um, we're just going to tip it upside down. But if you have a mold, go ahead and make something. I always like to have a mold on hand. Otherwise, I suggest just setting your popsicle stick down and flipping it right over so it's going to all drain and I can pull it off later. All right, you guys, we'll be back in about 24 hours and see how this bad boy looks. Okay, you guys, it has been 24 hours and my piece is done. I'm gonna bring this up there so you guys can see. Look at all those cells and that lacing that was created. So beautiful. Um, now, I do have a little bit of a layer. If I wanted to, I could put another pour and have add more dimension with another layer of waves. But I think this is gorgeous how it is. Um, so as you can see, I do have a little bit of, um, resin that came out and all I have to do is go along and sand. Now when I'm doing that, I want to make sure I am going to be sanding the whole thing. Um, otherwise I'm going to get kind of a partial sand look here and over here and not here and then the grain will look completely different everywhere. So you wanna make sure you sand all the way around it. So I did go ahead and I did pour an extra one. I just wanted to show you guys could do tighter waves all the way through and kind of give yourself a completely different look. Um, it really just comes down to a preference. I also wanted to point out if your resin is a little sticky, that means you did not mix equal parts. So you can just pour right over it and you'll be okay. Um, but again, it's very, very important that your resin and hardener are equal. Otherwise you aren't gonna have a piece that hardens correctly or cures correctly. All right, you guys, thank you for joining me and happy crafting. Mm -hmm.